A healthy coral reef can be compared to a bustling city, containing one quarter of the ocean's resident species as its population. Coral provides structured dwellings for numerous organisms and a food source for thousands of fish and animal species. Even humans rely on coral reefs. Without them, entire fishing communities would be devastated and humans would never have a chance at the life-saving medicines being developed from coral reef organisms. Reefs also protect millions of coastal homes from stormy waves and rising sea levels. Today, our three adventurers take a dive to visit one of the most vibrant coral reefs in Costa Rica. Join them in learning more about what this planet owes to a world hidden beneath the ocean and find out what is causing some reefs around the world to look like this. It's been a few years since we've traveled together. There's still so much yet to be discovered. Human beings can be so cruel towards so many animals. When you have the opportunity to look into their eyes, to know their stories, animals that are rescued here can be released into the wild again where they're really meant to live. I hope people get inspired and treat animals with more care and respect. Costa Rica is holding on to a cryptic secret, one that researchers have been trying to crack for decades since the discovery of these nearly perfect stone spheres scattered around the country. Archaeologists know their creation dates back to long before Christopher Columbus came to the Americas, but they've had trouble deciphering much else. Who made them? What tools were used? What were the spheres used for? There are hundreds of them ranging in size, and unfortunately, Almost all of them now adorn people's lawns, parks, and monuments, removed from any historical context. Because of this, we may never find out the story behind these spheres. One of the few places these artifacts have remained in their discovered location is Caño Island, just off Costa Rica's Pacific coast. In the Caño Island forest, there is an archeological site a great mystery, since we still don't know how these people, our ancestors, could sail the distance from where we were in Sierpe to this spot with such heavy stone spheres. Researchers hope studying these stones in historically accurate places like this will one day unlock their secrets. In a similar way, Caño Island is one of the few places in Costa Rica that maintains some of its rich biodiversity. Dive teams report finding up to 22 species of coral here. The island is preserved as a national park with limited access to minimize human activity. It is hoped that people who visit will gain an interest in protecting rapidly declining coral reefs around the world so that the reefs, unlike the stone spheres, are not ruined before scientists can learn from them. For their final adventure, Gabi Kassel and Caro are on their way to see the Kenyo Island Coral Reef. To get there, they must take a boat ride 19 kilometers from the Costa Rica mainland. Plenty of time to get excited and nervous. The trip was a view of paradise. So wonderful. You can, this is such a pure water. You can see through the water with the sun. Wonderful. And I love speed, so it was amazing. <laughs> you can see the water splashing. You can see the whole blue sky. 
such a wonderful experience. Um, I survived the boat trip. <laughs> I'm very glad I didn't get seasick. And I saw a turtle on the way, which was excellent. But I'm glad we're here now. We're going to do some snorkeling. It's going to be my first time. I've done shark diving and crocodile diving, but I still have a little bit of difficulties to stay with my head under the water. I'm hoping I'm gonna stay calm to be able to appreciate the beautiful creatures that I might find in the water. It's not my first time, but uh, yes, in Costa Rica, so I, I don't know what to expect. More beautiful things, I guess. <laughs> I like snorkeling and diving, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing some fish and whatever is down there under the water. Colourful fish are everywhere. Their spots and stripes either allow them to camouflage or warn predators away. But the coral itself is also a complex organism. Despite their stationary nature, corals are animals, not plants. They are made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny animals called polyps that band together. These structures are hard because each polyp secretes a limestone shell that sticks to the others. Coral grows whenever new polyp larvae land on the outer shells of living or dead polyps. The result? These beautiful formations. It's quite an ideal place, as you can see. They are very exotic things for our three friends here to visit. The place we went to today, where we went snorkeling, is where that is allowed. But doing any kind of activity on the back of the island is not allowed, because it is reserved for research studies. Researchers are continuing to make new discoveries. For a long time, they were baffled about the reason why corals of the same species could be different colors. The answer is in the algae. Tiny plants that coat the inside of coral polyps and provide nutrients to supplement the food that polyps catch passing by. Like all plants, algae makes its own food from the sun. But too much sun can kill the algae, so corals develop the bright pigments as a shield to protect their beneficial algae. The colors pink and purple are especially effective similar to the way human skin that is exposed to the sun produces more melanin. The views are spectacular, but Gabi is still feeling sick, a lasting effect of the rocking on the boat. The girls decide it's time to go ashore onto Canyo Island to rest and talk about their experience so far. Well, I took the boat trip quite well. I was very happy. And then we stopped to wait for everything, everybody to get ready and um, I got sick. I thought it would be, be better to be in the water, but with the snorkeling, I like, just couldn't take it. So I went back to the boat and just lie down, but um, the breakfast uh, still wanted to go and feed the fish. So, well, that's what happened. <laughs> and I'm very glad to be on solid ground right now. <laughs> In the beginning, I was super afraid. <laughs> My stomach was this small. So I had to practice, I had to focus to make sure I wasn't going to freak out. So thank God I didn't. And when I put my head um, underwater for the first time, I see things that my naked eyes have never seen before. I believe life is about facing your fears, and I love that.
I was able to see a parrot fish that was amazing then a lot of fish together they were swimming and I tried to move with them just to follow them a little bit I see also a blue fish, I don't know the name, and a yellow one. Really beautiful, really beautiful. Oh, such an amazing, beautiful fish. I think it was like distance from my arm, from my hand, and it was just so fantastic. I'm very happy that the girls can enjoy the moment, and I saw like for uh, a lot of fish for about five minutes, so I'm happy with that. When I looked at some of the fish and some of the corals and some of the shapes and all the colors I saw there, I just had one thought. It could never ever had happened by chance. And I was so I was so deeply touched by it. It is true that every organism on a coral reef lives in delicate harmony with the rest. Harm to even one species of animal can transform an entire reef from this to this. A scene as tragic as an empty city. If humans aren't careful what we put into and take out of our oceans, we will be responsible for desolating these great underwater cities. I was thinking, there is uh, so much of God's creativity that we can see. Under the sea, it is a different world, a really different world, and I, I'm really looking forward to see more of that. Our three friends, Gabi, Kassel, and Caro, are learning that the planet's coral reefs are in trouble with huge sections becoming sickly pale and starting to look like this. It's a phenomenon called coral bleaching, and it used to happen rarely to very small areas of coral reef. But ever since the early 1980s, bleaching has been happening every few years in a global fashion and seeming to extend across reefs and even regions. The worst event so far happened in 2016, affecting reefs around the world, but especially the Great Barrier Reef. That's when more than 90% of these reefs that line Australia's northeast corner were affected by bleaching. Like an accelerating alarm call, the ocean is telling us something is wrong. Join the Animal Encounters team as they explore and document reefs on the Pacific side of Costa Rica coming face to face with the exotic and the endangered creatures, and learn what humans can do to help nurse these ocean communities back to health. Gubby, Kassel and Cara have taken a boat ride 30 minutes from Costa Rica's mainland to the outskirts of Caño Island, where coral, fish and other unique looking creatures dwell together in a host of delicate symbiotic relationships. Only 10 snorkelers are allowed at a time under the watchful eye of a tour guide. This is one of the most important reserves that we have on the Pacific coast. Even in all of Costa Rica, there are some species that are found here that cannot be found anywhere else on the Pacific coast anymore. While the girls are snorkeling near Kenyo, another part of the Animal Encounters team is embarking on a deeper endeavor. Using scuba diving tanks, they'll descend into the nearby Drake Bay.
It's a little darker down here, but there's still plenty of sunlight to support life. The fish aren't worried about the low light. Many of them are wearing iridescent colors that seem to shine in the darkness. White-tipped reef shark can be found from this side of Costa Rica all the way to the coasts of the African continent. But they mainly find their food and shelter in shallow water, like this coral reef, where they are the top predator. White tips are relatively calm during the day and spring into hunting mode at night. They feed on fish, crustaceans, and many other marine animals, making them vital for keeping marine life populations in balance. At about two meters long, white tip reef sharks are much smaller than their cousin, the oceanic white tip, and they can often be seen resting together inside crevices. White tips sometimes even return to the same crevice day after day for years. Unfortunately, because of their size, these sharks often get caught in fishing nets and they are now classified as near threatened. The white tip reef shark is just one of many species that rely on the coral reefs for food and shelter. But scientists are increasingly concerned about the planet's paling coral. That's because bleached coral is stressed coral. Bleaching happens when each of the tiny animals that make up a coral expels the algae that normally lives inside of them. But why do coral get stressed and shed their beneficial algae? Researchers say there are several factors most tied to human actions. Every few years, a surge of warmer water spreads across the ocean. This event is part of the El Nino phenomenon, and there is strong evidence to suggest that it is caused by climate change. Even raising an ocean's temperature by one or two degrees overall can cause corals to bleach. Bleaching can also be triggered by pollutants in the water and overfishing. Coral that is suffering from bleaching is still alive and can recover, but it can't last forever without its nutrient-producing algae, and if left too long, it will die. 2016 was the longest bleaching event recorded so far, and scientists are worried it will only get worse. Back at Canyon Island, Kassler and Caro can easily see the signs of a bleaching event that happened more than 30 years ago, in the 1980s. Kanyo lost about half of its live coral, and it has taken decades for new coral to recolonize, putting this area on the vibrant path to recovery that it is on now. Now, Kenya Island is a place where species such as this rare hawk-nosed turtle can find a suitable habitat. It was amazing to see the turtle. Even when turtles look so heavy with those big shells, they move with a lot of grace in the water, swimming, floating, and dancing. The way they move their flippers make them look like they are actually flying through the ocean. I put my head under the water, and suddenly there he was. Such a beautiful turtle. And then one of our cameramen swam under the water, right next to the turtle. It was amazing to see. Over their lifespan of 30 to 50 years, a hawk's billed turtle can grow to weigh as much as a full-grown man. Sadly, their lives are often cut short, killed by humans for their eggs, their meat, or their exquisitely patterned shells, which are often made into jewelry. Today, there are 80% less hawksbill turtles than there were 100 years ago. Researchers believe there may be as few as 8,000 of them left, with more disappearing every year. We have learned so much in this trip. The most valuable lesson for me is to realize that we, as humans, act really selfishly towards nature. I want to remember that it is not about how I feel. It's not about what I want, 
to touch them, to feed them, or doing whatever I feel like it's good for them. We have the responsibility of taking good care of nature, and that includes finding out how we can really help. We are all from different countries, but we can learn so much from Costa Rica. I myself can teach my son about what I have seen and how precious all the animals are, the ones in our very own neighborhood. We can make sure our own neighborhood is safe by picking up trash and also talking to our neighbors. It was so good to meet all these people who take care of animals. I so share their love for them. We all need to be aware that what we do has an impact on nature and animals. Back home, I want to share with others some good ideas on how to take care of our environment. I'm so glad that you invited me for this trip. I'm glad you came. Yay! <laughs> this is a great time. I can believe yeah. this is our last day. I know. I enjoyed it very much. I was so moved. I cried so much. <laughs> <laughs> there are many stories that we sometimes don't know how to tell them because they affect us for real. Yeah, but we also heard some really nice stories with happy endings definitely so that was encouraging that you know yeah. we can make a difference yeah and things are getting better at least in costa rica seems like it mm. well the numbers are going up and up because they a few years ago they were down to about 1200 mm. but we introduced a monkey bridge program but even with the happy endings i still I think there's so much to learn mm. that us human beings still have to learn yeah. towards nature and the animals. We now realize the importance of telling these stories and people being aware of them. Right. Yes. I'm gonna miss you. I'm going to miss you, Amiga. Yeah, you too. Well, we can always plan on another trip. Mm -hmm. Should we do that? Yes. <laughs> Are you in? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <The dance. laughs>